Hi everyone, Luke from the Broken Meeple here. Yes, I thought I wasn't going to do these anymore, but then, you know what? I like board game apps. I do want to continue playing these apps. I want to experience what they're like and give my first impressions on them. Now, I'm not resurrecting the whole board game approved segment that I did before. That's not the idea. What I want to do is kind of merge this with the intended solo playthrough uh, segments that I wanted to do in the future. So some of them will be on the tabletop versions of games in, like, in my actual game room and some will be these app playthroughs where I just play through a solo mode on here. So you kind of get a mix of the two and hopefully this will be of interest to some of you. So I thought, without further ado, I would get started on a very recent port and that is Mystic Veil. John Declare made this uh, a very interesting card game for AEG a little while ago, and it's had numerous expansions since then. I mean, they're going to be pretty much doing it like a smash-up type thing, where expansion after expansion after expansion comes out, and there's going to be loads. Not a problem, in my opinion. But I was interested when they said they were going to port it over to a Steam format, and that's the platform I'm using. And I thought, well, it's going to be a little bit like repetitive I suppose with the just the base set included at the moment but you know you can pretty much guarantee that if this is a hit it will see DLC paid expansion content and hopefully fairly soon in the near future but I just want to basically do this as a kind of you know watch me play through the game I'll probably edit it down for you know time constraints and that so that you're not just watching never-ending video of me we'll see we'll see how it goes in post-production but I just want to yeah play through the game give my thoughts on it, you know, not necessarily my first, first impressions of it, you know, I have played this game a few times already, but to sort of prepare me for it, but I just want to comment on things as I'm going through, and hopefully this will influence you as to whether you fancy to acquire this, or whether you want to pass it by, entirely up to you. So, without further ado, Mystic Veil. Love this card game, it's in my top 100. You don't get a huge amount of uh, settings that you can play around with. I mean, you're pretty much... Well, I might just turn that down a little bit. Uh, you kind of like window mode, fast mode, and some card prompts and that. I don't quite understand the whole sort of like... I mean, whether to include fertile soil when checking for purchasable cards. Why would you not? Kind of odd. But there's not a huge amount you can play with. It's mostly volume and uh, you know, audio only, so not much in there. You do have a quick reference for what your deck is, taking a turn, you know, basic rules of the game, which is quite handy because it, you know, it allowed me to just get a quick refresher on what it is you're supposed to be doing. But, yep, it explains everything you really need to know about your basic turn sequence as opposed to the full rulebook. Now, I can't see the full rulebook anywhere on this app, so if you don't know how to play the game properly, it's probably going to be a little bit of a trial and error thing, or you might have to research the rulebook elsewhere. But anyway, you want to see how it plays. So, not worrying about multiplayer. You can easily do online multiplayer through Steam. I've got a friend of mine who I gave her another key to this app. And we can play online multiplayer. Works fairly well. No problem with it so far. Uh, you do have a learn to play thing. So even though I say there's not a full rule book, you can at least go through a tutorial. So it's not like you're completely devoid of rules. But let's get into an actual game. So number of players I like to you can play with up to four but this game Mystic Veil vale, has always been a bit of a multiplayer solitaire game so I just prefer to keep it at two you know nice one-on-one -on -one battle I find it works just fine <laughs> now one thing that has to be said that I have noticed the AI is not the most difficult thing in the world I'm not saying it's a pushover well unless you keep it on this difficulty anyway but it's certainly not the hardest thing in the world so I like to have it somewhere I found it when I was here, I wipe, you know, I wiped the floor with the AI. So I want to have it here, really. I don't want to have it stupidly hard, but, you know, you can if you want a bit of a challenge. I think here is a good enough of a sort of a setup where you're not necessarily going to get creamed, but you, if you make a mistake, you might learn the repercussions of it. And this is when I eat my words and realize that I lose my game of this in a minute. So we shall see. Now, they've been pretty faithful to the uh, actual game itself, so all the artwork is exactly like the cards and all the like setup and the board and the symbolic iconography and that. It's all just like the game, which is always a good thing. Um, I've always wondered, like, I don't know if this is intentional, but it's like all the, like, the graphics on here, you know, all the cards look sort of frayed on the outside, you know, and they're not particularly even, that kind of thing. I don't know if that was intentional. 
Looks a little bit odd, but no, not a big deal. I just thought they were going to be like, you know, clean and crisp, but yeah, that's no big deal really. But one thing I really like, and this is so cool, I mean, it, it's, it doesn't affect the gameplay at all. It just adds another 15 minutes to my game time because I'm so obsessed with pretty things. But uh, look at what happens when I put my mouse pointer over these top Azure cards. Verdant Valley at the top here. You can see? Little deer raises its head and the sunlight comes down. And if I hover over a pool of light, you know, you get a... Not a huge amount of a change there, but you get a little bit of a sort of cloud uh, formation in the pool. Um, field of flowers. The flowers move. The fertile soil, you know, the rain comes down. Uh, the griffin flies. The angry rubes and the telephone den. It just, it gives a soft little animation on the card picture. I love that. That is so nice. I mean, I, I know it doesn't affect the gameplay, but it's so pretty and I like pretty things. You know, what's, what's wrong with something pretty in a game? I mean, granted, it sort of delays the game a bit when I'm sort of just constantly hovering over the pictures of new cards going, oh, what does this do? What does this do? But that's an attention to detail that I like. Now, if you want to see them in more detail, you can, you know, bring them into full view over there or these into full view and... I'd prefer to have it quite balanced because I can read the small text. And if you want to scroll with them, I mean, obviously, there's nothing you can scroll at the top, but the mouse wheel does a good job of just taking you through the, uh, you know, the high level stuff, the middle level stuff, the first tier, and of course, the basic fertile soils. Now, you have to excuse me, I will be drinking occasionally during this video. Hmm, I am from Britain, I do like my tea. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, down the bottom here, you have got the your field and your deck. So you are harvesting the cards from your field into this plane area, and you have to stop when you hit the free spoil symbol. So if you flip another card over and it has four a fourth spoil symbol, you spoil, and you have to basically just get a little bonus mana for next turn, and that's it. So at the moment, I've got a pretty rubbish setup there. There's not a lot I can do. I would like to get another card in my deck, but... I can't really do that right now, so I'm just going to take it safe and buy a Fertile Soil. So what you can do is you have to do everything in steps, which is quite good because it means you can't accidentally screw yourself over by accident by clicking on something that you shouldn't have done. Here you have to click this uh, plant at the bottom, so if I want to push another deck onto the field, I click on this button. And if I want to go to the next phase for Harvest, which is where I get my mana and start buying cards, I have to click this button. So I can't accidentally go... You know, I can click on these and have a look at the details of them. And I do like the uh, the fact that you can actually hear the sound effect of the rain in the picture and that. It's really cool. A little sound of the wolf there. It's like it's so really cool. I love this little attention to detail. But, yeah, if I click on it, then I can't accidentally purchase it. I can't, you know, I'm clicking and dragging. I'm clicking all over the place. I can't accidentally screw myself over. And I do hate that in games when one accidental click completely screws you over. You have to come down here and click on this button, and it's not something you're likely to click by accident. So, I'm not going to push my luck for now. Let's go along. So, it automatically does all your symbols and mana for you. I really like that because one thing about Mystic Veil is that you do have a fair amount to track with your cards. Particularly if you get some stupid combo going, that means you draw out most of your deck. And then it highlights in the whole, like, tableau what you can buy. Well, straight up, I can only buy a Fertile Soil, so here we go. Do I want top, middle, or bottom? To be honest, Lord knows. Um, I think I'm going to go middle. You slot it in, click a button again. And everything just does it for you. Now, you don't get to see a lot of what the opponent does, which is a little bit of a downer, because I would like to actually notice where he's getting his cards from or anything like that. But you, you can click down and see what his like, deck is going to look like, but at least it does it automatically and it gets out of the way nice and quickly. So I'm left with another similar rubbish scenario here. That's uh, a bit annoying. Is there any reason I want to buy a Peacekeeper Druid? Probably not. I'm not a fan of this one. Not a fan of that card. I'd rather save up and get like a Moon Wolf and that. So I'm just going to continue down the Fertile Soil path. <clears throat> wow, he got lucky. 
yeah, you can, there's a, a, a slight correction to what I just said there, you can look at their tableau, but you have to click on their icon and watch them go through their turn, and you can set it onto fast mode so it does it even faster if you really just don't care about the animations and that, but uh, yeah, so at least you, you can see that the computer is not like cheating, <laughs> which is not like it would, but still, you can never be too sure. And I seem to have a habit of just constantly finding myself with two mana. That's not helpful. Well, I guess I just need to carry on getting some fertile swords until I'm ready to start really churning in some cool cards. Again, still going to go in the middle. The only slight pain is that if I want to look at his turn, I can't see what I'm doing with my fields. Because my field is populating itself while the computer is doing their turn. So it's not like I can see both of them in sync. Maybe there's an option I haven't found that allows me to do that. But uh, yeah, it's a bit of a shame with that one. No veils. So let's see what have I got. Four cards in my deck. Three spoils. So I do at least have three mana this time. So I could buy something else. Field of Flowers, probably. Um, Earth Chant Chorus is not bad, but you have to be pretty specific with what you buy. I just like to get mana, 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 mana. So I'm going to buy myself a Field of Flowers. And we'll pop it on a new card. I'm, I'm going to try a different tactic this time. Last night when I played it, I did a tactic where I got a bunch of green spirit symbols and you know the, the trees and cancelled a lot of the spoil ones, so I was drawing out most of my deck. I do like that, but it does tend to get a bit of out of hand. Wow. That was a good turn. <laughs> that was a good turn. Nine mana. Wow. I could actually buy myself a really cool card. I could have a look at this. Ooh, what have we got here then? Uh, I'm always a bit hesitant about buying anything with a spoil symbol. I know it gives you four victory points, but it's got a spoil symbol on it. Oh, but I could buy myself a wild with a two thing. I could buy myself a bear totem and a... Yeah. I could buy myself a moon wolf and a... I used grasslands last time. I don't really want to do them again. Maybe I should go for a, a sentinel, like the defense symbol strategy this time. So I could get a moon wolf with one of those. And I could get either a hive swan or an ent elder. Personally, considering all the cards that are up here, maybe I should start going for a few of these Veil cards. So I'm actually going to splash out on a Ent Elder. The Ents are marching to war. <laughs> Alright, now I want to put this on its own separate card, so here we go. Lovely. And it keeps track of your victory points from, you know, just generic picking up from the total pile and also from the main victory points like on your card. So you can keep track of who's winning out of all the players, which is quite cool. <clears throat> He's going for a grassland, is he? Okay. Ah, you see Dawn Singer. Now that's a card I need. I need that, but the problem is I'm not sure I want it on any of these cards. That's a little bit of a pain. I don't think the computer is going to take it though, so I might just take a chance, but I can't really buy anything good for free mana. That's the problem. And I don't want to just get fertile soils all over the place. So you know what? I'm going to chance it. I'm going to push my luck this time. So I click on here. Regret. Regret. <laughs> so if you spoil, yep, you spoil. It highlights it. And you just end your turn. Now the only thing with this is that it highlights this for the extra mana. But... I thought you could save it for any turn when you needed it. It seems that it only u it uses it in this turn. So I don't know if you can sort of switch it on or off. I, maybe that's a rule in the book that I've got wrong in the past. But uh, kind of weird though. Now, I I know I shouldn't keep like, pushing my luck here. But I've drawn most of my cursed lands. Surely I can push my luck here. Okay, that didn't achieve anything. Good one, Luke. That was a bright idea, wasn't it? You know, teach me to be greedy. Okay. Ooh, feel the flowers. Right. Ah, but this is good. Now, I don't want to push my luck here because I have the card that I want to buy the Dawn Singer for. So I want to just stick with what I got. So go to harvest. 
Oh, it's actually got me some Veil symbols as well. Kelskazian Elder. Can I buy... Yes, I can buy a Veil card. Woohoo, let's have a look. So, just straight up victory points, just straight up victory points, or... A Sunstone Eyrie. Ooh. Decisions, decisions. I mean, that mana would get me some nice uh, potentials. So, okay, I'm going to buy the Sunstone Airy. And I can look those up there. Okay, let's see. Right, well, I want that. Uh, I want that Dawn Singer. So, yeah, it does mean that I'm limited on what I can purchase. And as much as a Bear Totem is great, I'll give it that. And so is a Life Breeder Seed. But I want to. I want to mess around with the thing, so I'm going to buy this one. Plump it on here, so that's going to get me one mana for each of those helmets in that card, which is already two, so that's going to be a free mana card. Nice. Now all I need is something that goes in the middle that also gives me a helmet, we'll have to see. Uh, but that's all I can do, so... Oh, I can purchase. I thought I just purchased two... Oh, wait, yeah, because you can do the Ares as well, can't you? In that case, I might as well grab another Fertile Soil then. I mean, why not? Uh, let's see. There we go. We'll have a Fertile Soil card. Mm -hmm. Okay, four mana. Well, that's good enough to get a Moon Wolf or something like that. So I think we'll stick with that. And there's also another Sentinel symbol, which I could do with... Maybe I should get the Wellspring, though. Uh, I do like Field of Flowers, and I do like Moonwolf, though. Moonwolf it is. So, we're going to put Moonwolf on this card. We're just going to have to accept that the Cursed Lands are rubbish cards, I think. And we'll just have to hope that life smiles on me when it comes to drawing these cards. Here we go. What is the computer doing? Oh, he's got a good turn coming up in a minute. What have I got? Five mana, just five mana. Okay. Well, Life Bringer Seed would give me the ability to cancel out one of my cursed lands. I mean, that's not a bad idea. Or I could just feel the flower, is it? That Hive Swarm would actually be a good combination for a future turn, though, because it has a spoil symbol, but I could cancel that out with a Life Bringer Seed. Oh, wait, no, I can't, because it's in the middle of the card. Oh, for crying out loud! <laughs> Why does fate hate me so? So maybe a Wellspring? That would get me some more of these. I mean, you know, they will get me some decent victory points. Or just keep going for the Field of Flowers and Fertile Souls and just come up with some cards that just give me stupid amounts of mana. I mean, that would be pretty sweet. You know what? Yeah, I'm going to do that. So, stupid amounts of mana. Field of Flowers. More Field. And a top Fertile Soul. There we go. That is a five mana card in its own. Haha. <laughs> awesome card. Let's have a look. Uh oh, he's going for uh, green spirit symbols. I have a feeling he could really screw me over here. Oh, please tell me I can get that Dawn Singer for that Ent card. Top bit. Of oh, I can get. Oh, yeah, that's going to be amazing. I want that card. If you buy it, computer, I will hate you. Now, one thing you do notice about this is that there was usually a lot of card flipping and a lot of tracking in the uh, normal board game. At least here, everything just goes quite smoothly. I mean, I'm taking a bit longer because I'm talking, but if I was just playing this normally, I could run through this game pretty quickly, and I tend to. You know, you can run through a game in 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes or something for a full-fledged game. Maybe a bit longer if you include more players, but I just have one-on-one. -on -one. I don't see the point of having four extra players. But, yeah, it, it's... It's all around a pretty speedy port. It takes a lot of the admin and a lot of the setup out of the game, which is usually one of the negatives some people have about the card game. And yeah, I would probably tend to agree. It does have that issue. Okay, I could get a cleansing rain, but I'm going to push my luck. Ah, good. Now, the Dawn Singer is not ready for one of these cards, though. So I'm going to grab the Wellspring. We're going to really, like, do something with these symbols. Ooh, Moonwolf. Well, he's just buying Fertile Soil, so big deal. He hasn't got much in the way of victory points yet. Hold on, eight... What the? Eighteen? Where did I get eighteen mana from? One, 
Fuck. Oh my god, the manner! Oh, fate smiled on me with that turn. I, I do, can I even buy 18 mana worth of stuff? I'm, I'm sure. I mean, I want the Dawn Singer. It's only four, but that Dawn Singer on that card is going to be sick. Oh, well, I'm not. <laughs> I think I'll push my luck. No! <laughs> Stupid man! <laughs> god, his sickness. Right, I know I can buy a really big card. But, oh, but then that Dawn Singer, but then Gaia's Chosen, oh, Gaia's Chosen would be quite cool, actually, I mean, that would give me, what have I got, one, two, f for each symbol on this card, I mean, it would give me quite a bit, anyway, let's look at uh, these first, let's have a look, I can get quite a few of these, Game one wild, just three victory points, Choose a card in your field or on deck. That card gets one until end of turn. I know I'm technically going with that scenario, but I can't find anything that's really gunning off it, so I don't think that's overly necessary. I think I'm going to grab the Pool of Light, though, because that one wild every turn is going to allow me to buy pretty much any of these things I like, which is not a small feat. Oh, yeah, I got that um, eerie thing. I need to remember that. Okay, so could get the Hive Swarm, but I still don't feel comfortable with it. Dawn Singer on that card would be pretty sick, I have to admit. I don't think Gaius Chosen is going to go anywhere useful, though. That's the thing. This could go on there, but it's not that worth. No, let's get the Dawn Singer. Let's get the Dawn Singer, because I just want to beat that card. Oh, yes, and I can, I can buy another card, so okay. I've got 14 mana. Let's not waste it on a small card. Let's actually get something big here. Life Bloom Orchids. Pretty good doing. I suppose the Hive Swarm is four victory points a turn. I mean, this will accelerate the game a lot. And I probably could do with that. So, we can work on... I mean, the Life Bringer Seed could cancel all that stuff on that card, actually. So, can I put it on a Cursed Land? No, I can't. Uh, but I could put it on the blank card. Of, oh, wait, yes, I could. So I could put it there and then buy that life bringer seed and cancel it later. So, okay, we're going to do that. It's going to be a pretty damaging card for now. But later on, I'll be able to put it on. Although maybe I shouldn't have brought the Dawn Singer then. In that case, stupid. Oh, well, never mind. Let's keep going. Achievement unlocked. He's, he's going to have some pretty powerful turns soon. i got to be careful. Alright, well, there's my uh, rubbish turn. Two, I might not as well bother. I'm just going to plant. I'm going to push him on the deck. Yeah, good luck with that. Rubbish. Yeah, this, this is the one problem I'm having with this deck as I'm building it. I'm having a turn of amazement and then two turns of rubbish. But, needs must. So, I get free mana. Again, I want to push my luck a bit, so... Ooh, now that's changed things. I can get Moon Wolves. I will deal with that. Moon Wolf it is. I've never been a fan of the Hawk. I mean, it gives you two victory points, I guess, but a red spoil symbol? I'm not sure I'm on for that. Now, that Dawn Singer, yeah, he's getting me one, two, three. I mean, does each one trigger off itself? So, one, two. He's getting me three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, it triggers off itself. That Dawn Singer card is a three, six, seven mana card by itself. Come on. That's pretty sweet. Now, I'm cool with what I've got there, so let's have a look. I don't have the card that I want to put the. Hang on, did he buy the. Oh no, I bought the... Stupid, I bought the uh, things. Ooh, an Elder, I could just get loads of these symbols and it will be ridiculous. Yeah, that's happening. Put it here. And now, to buy one of these really good things, and we're going to buy... Ooh, six victory points, I think we'll buy the Vernon Valley. And I can buy even more of these things, so why don't we just buy the Fungal Forest while we're at it? I have a feeling, though, that the AI... This is one thing about the game, actually. I feel that the AI is not particularly difficult either way. Oh, hang on. Oh, God, what's he doing? 
Hmm. I'm kind of wiping the floor with the AI though, and this is on the second before hard. And that is a slight negative with the game, I think the AI needs a bit of a tweak. I mean, I'm pretty much going to be playing this... I, I play it on this level if I want to experiment with decks or just showcase it to you. But yeah, you're probably going to want to play it on hard, like, all the time, which is, you know, ideal. And even then, it's not the most difficult card in the world. Now, do I dare push my luck with that... Hang on, did he bring... Oh, you... You burk. You bought the life bringer seed. I was going to shove on that card. Ah, oh, that's annoying. Oh, well, well I'm not going to push my luck then. I'm just going to get in and buy something. Now, I've got a wild symbol, so I could buy... What I could do is use my veil card. So, if I go down here... Once per turn, I can spend two and use any... Oh, I need to actually have earned it first. That's no good. Uh, Alright, scratch that. So, I just got a ton of mana. Fine, grab some mana. Guy has chosen? Probably not. Uh, Dreadcore Cobra? Definitely not. Life Boon Orchid? Maybe. Mindful Owl could help me... Maybe it's time I actually started sorting out some of these red spoil symbols anyway. So, let's... But then, to be honest, my turns are pretty good. I just want to drain these victory points out. I need to accelerate the game now. So, okay. Let's buy Life Boom Orchid. Let's uh, have a half-decent uh, card there. And then I suppose I do want to try and mitigate the fact that I'm constantly having to deal with the, the red spoil symbol. So how about we do the Mindful Owl? I do like the Mindful Owl. It's one of my favorite cards, you know, he gives me two mana and he allows me to discard another card in the field, i.e. a cursed land. So, we'll go with that. That'll do. <laughs> oh yes, I was kind of afraid this would happen. <laughs> By creating this awesome card, I'm kind of, like, screwing myself out on the free spoil symbol thing. But it gives me four victory points. I probably should stick with it. I mean... I can buy a Veil card, I guess. Oh, yeah, let's just stick with it. You know, I get four victory points, and I'll just buy a card that gives me another two victory points, so why not? I don't think I've ever had this many Veil cards in my life. <laughs> but we'll go with that. So, take the four victory points. Lovely. How did I spoil... Oh, we shuffled the deck. Whoops. Yeah, not being able to get that life bringer seed is kind of screwing me over a little bit here. <laughs> oh, there's the Feral Chieftain. I could have done with him, so... Oh, well. Wow, that was a fun turn, guys. Oh, you're kidding. I, I have a choice. I have to discard a card in my field, and I have a choice of doing that one or that one. Don't do it. Go with it, go with it. Wow, he's buying a lot of cards now. Uh-oh, his engine is starting the build. I need to get a move on. So, let's... Uh, well, I'm going to get six victory points for this set, so we'll stick with it. Now, what can I get? Uh, I can get... I could get the Blessed Savannah if... Oh, gain one permanent... Oh, I, get, I could get the six victory point thing, but actually, I probably could do with that. Actually, I got two wilds, so I should probably do that. Okay, so how do I do this ability then? I can go here. Ah, yes. So tells me I can use the ability, so I'm going to spend two, and then I can trade something for something. So I'm going to get rid of one of these yellows I don't need, turn it into a thing for two mana, and now it allows me to do the best of mana. That was pretty easy. I haven't had to do that before, actually. That's the first. So, yeah, thank you for that. That's Savannah. Purchase. And now I need to buy some good stuff. Now, can I do anything with that life bringer seed? No, because it's on the wrong level. Drat. Okay, uh, can I do anything else? Uh, I could be really stupid and buy a third hive swarm for that card. But... Oh, but then that's eight victory points at a time. I mean, that's... Pretty awesome. <laughs> you know what? Why not? If Even if it's the only card I get, it's eight victory points. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. All i got to do is just hope it doesn't spoil me too often. 
And that leaves me with... Why can't I... Oh yeah, because I'm restricted on space. And the life bringer is no good. The hulking fawn side is okay. Oh, I can buy another veil card. I didn't realize you could buy that many. Do I buy a hulking fawn hide? It gives me three victory points. I'll put it on here. I'm adding a lot of spoil symbols to my deck now, but I'm expecting that I should be able to drain this so fast it won't matter. But I better hurry because the computer is starting to get a little bit quick with his turns. I fear I may be taking too long. Right, well, this doesn't give me much. Three mana and one. That's pretty useless, so I'm just going to try and push my luck. Ooh! Push my luck. Push my luck. I don't know. I don't know if I should. That is so tempting. No, I'm not going to take the risk. I'm not taking the risk. I'm going to be a chicken. Chicken, 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 chicken. But I will get a moon wolf for my trouble. Now, I could have pushed my luck then, it seems. But it doesn't matter. Bide your time. You know, he's buying all the cheap stuff. So, yes, he is getting points. But he's not... Oh, I don't care if he gets fertile soils. <sighs> Slow down, computer. Slow down. But now... I've got 12 mana and a bunch of symbols. I should be able to do something pretty sweet on my turn. Right, victory points, victory points, victory points. I need victory points everywhere. Ooh, Gro oh, for crying out loud, why does this never seem to be in the category that I want it? Oh well, never mind. Uh, let's see. I could, no, I need to get victory points because otherwise um, it could be problematic. So I could get the Ancient Roots, though. I mean, that would allow me to get some stupidly sick turns. But now, nah, let's keep the victory points up. Because I'm a little bit concerned that that's going to bite me later. Or is it? No, I want Ancient Life Roots. A permanent green. I mean, that will be pretty good. And because I can afford it. Yeah, why not? Cascading Falls. Right, now I need to figure out something to do with these. I mean, these are gain one victory point for each thingy on this card. Again, it's in the wrong place. Well, actually, no. Feral Chieftain could go on there. That could be good. Or I do the green thing. In fact, I'd rather do the green thing because I want to have, like, power turns. I'm actually saying that, looking at what cards I've got, I... Oh, I can do both. Grove Tender. Grove Tender. Wow, is that all the cards I was able to get despite that? Come on. You. Stop buying cards! <laughs> oh my god, he's almost got more victory points than me. Oh my god, I could actually lose this if I'm not careful. I need to end this now. Ah, five. I am going to end it. This is good. I might just be able to get away with this. Okay, so concentrate on getting the most victory points that I can. So, Feral Grove it is. <laughs> and then I just need to buy something with a lot of victory points. So, doesn't matter. They're all worth two. There's no other benefit to that. So, yeah, just buy... Well, I can only buy... Oh... I don't have enough mana for some of these. Doesn't matter. Just buy a card. And buy a Feral Chieftain, I guess. It well, really doesn't matter, does it? So, alright, let's just buy something that's worth a victory point. And get it on a card, so probably a Bear Totem. This will drain the five. Final turn, done. So let's hope he can't do some crazy shenanigans here. Not if he's buying fertile soils. He's... Oh, I don't know. Ooh, we're 
Good, we're good. I think we're good. Here we go, here we go. Oh, that was close. Oh my god. I take back what I said. Yeah, I mean, you can lose to the AI on this difficulty if you're not careful. And I nearly did. I nearly took too long. But still, victory. Ha ha ha. Go for it. Certainly putting it on hard will add to the challenge. Yeah. So that's my playthrough of Mystic Veil. I hope you enjoyed it. You know, I hope you sort of got a feeling for the game through that in my comments. Personally, I'm not trying to review this. I'm just trying to give you an oversight of what I think so far. And I, I think it's a pretty good port. You know, this card game is really good. I have all the expansions in the tabletop version. And I think it's really cool. But it does have a bit of a setup. It does have a bit of a downtime with more players, something that the Equinox variant in the recent expansion solves, but still, it's a lot of setup and a lot of tinkering around. This gives me a way to play Mystic Veil in a very quick time. I mean, I was rabbiting on there, and it takes a bit longer, but most part, it's pretty quick. And I look forward to the future when they hopefully, please, put all the expansions in this DLC. Now, that's the one thing that's lacking, I think, so far, is that you're using the base game cards. You're going to see them quickly. It's going to get repetitive. But this is probably something you're not going to play a million times in a row. But you, you know that if this is a successful port, which I think it's got pretty good potential here, it will get paid DLC expansions. And I look forward to grabbing those because more cards is really good. Now, I don't know what order they're going to do them in. I mean, if you do... If you go in order of the tabletop release, it means that the next one's just going to be a bunch of cards, which is, okay, it's nice, but I hope they don't price it too much. That's the worry I have. You know, do not price this out in the market with these new cards. What I'm really looking forward to, though, is when they put leaders in. And probably the, what do they call it, Conclave? Leaders and Conclave were the two best expansions out of the whole lot, and they will be brilliant DLC-like things, you know, particularly leaders. You need the leaders, and I would love to have those totems in from Conclave. So, you know, there's good stuff to come. So, that's it for me. I'll see you on the next episode of The Broken Meeple. And remember, as always, whether it's on tabletop or on a PC or on your tablet, it's still only a game. Goodbye.